G'day, in this video we're going to try and do the impossible task of defining regenerative agriculture. Now I say the impossible task because uh, I guess this debate has been going on for a while now um, and regenerative agriculture is, as, as we'll see, not so much a definable topic. It's very, it's very difficult to define. Um, and because of that there's a lot of problems in terms of uh, people saying they're regenerative but not quite regenerative and then greenwashing and, and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're new to regenerative agriculture, uh, it's important not to get too dogmatic about the practices and think about it as a larger uh, holistic understanding of uh, landscape and, and why, not, why not. Before we get into it, my name's Till Simmons. Uh, I do regenerative agriculture consulting for farmers uh, looking to improve their farms to achieve the things that we're about to talk about. Um, if you're a farmer in Australia, then uh, get in contact with me for a free 30 minute consultation to see how uh, you can start using these practices to not just achieve a uh, better landscape, but profitability in your farm. Um, cool, all right, well, let's get into it. So as a starting point, um, my uh, honours supervisor, Tom Donahue, had defined um, regenerative agriculture as a system of crop and or livestock production through natural complexity with respect to its inherent uh, capacity increases the quality of the product and the availability of the resources uh, agriculture depends upon such as water, soil, biota, renewable energy and human endeavour. Um, this is a good definition um, but it's one of those uh, scientific definitions. So we have, we have a diagram here um, and this is simply all regenerative agriculture is. We have our outcomes so we'll define what our outcomes are in a moment we have our outcomes. Regenerative agriculture is simply in improving this outcome over time. Sustainable agriculture is keeping that outcome the same. We're not, we're not improving it, we're not degrading it, it's the same. And then uh, conventional agriculture or degenerative agriculture uh, is degrading or reducing that outcome over time. And so because, because we're looking at this as a improvement or uh, worsening of an outcome over time, it's actually really difficult to, to describe. There is no set practice to, to say what regenerative agriculture is. It's not like organic farming, which is uh, the absence of, uh, or the absence of uh, toxins in our farming system. This, it, it's really uh, outcome based. Are we improving or degrading uh, the system? And that, that in itself is easy to define. Um, What's difficult is this part, the outcome. What outcomes are we trying to measure and to decide whether or not we, we are improving or degrading the system. And so I think there's, there's really three um, outcomes that we're looking at. So the first one is landscape health. So landscape health, health takes everything into consideration from soil health uh, to, the, um, to the health of our waterways. Um, everything, I guess, in the natural environment, so trying to improve the natural environment's health. Um, the next one is food production. So we want to ensure that we have not just uh, uh, calories or, or energy and protein, but we want food. We actually want nutritious food that is um, dense in its nutrition that can, we can actually use and have a serious conversation about using food as health. So I would define regenerative agriculture. Or one, of the, one of the outcomes that we want from regenerative agriculture is to increase the nutritional value of our food. Um, and then also improve the landscape health of our food. Now, finally, and the most important factor is, is farming profit. We want to increase farming profit. You can't be green if you're in the red. And I love that saying because it, 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 regenerative agriculture is not regenerative in itself if it's not making the regenerative farmers money. And so it's very important that regenerative, far, uh, regenerative ag actually makes farmers money. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it apart from a, uh, basically being a charity. And farmers aren't running a charity, they're running a business, so it's very important they can actually make money. Once these things, these three things are achieved, I would define that as regenerative agriculture. Now, the question then comes, well, what can we do to achieve these three things? Um, and like most questions, it depends. It depends on your context. Uh, so it depends on your climate, your soil, you, so you, you, the way you actually want to run your farm. If you don't want to be uh, moving livestock every hour, like it, it really depends. Depends on the lifestyle you want to have, as well as you know your markets, what markets you have lo um, local to you. 
uh, and the systems and resources that you have available to yourself. So for example, um, I, did, I just did a, a video on biochar. Biochar, in one perspective, is regenerative because uh, you're improving the system naturally, you take natural resources and you're using them to improve your soil health and, and uh, your food value, or the nutrient, nutrient value in your food. And it might work out to be profitable on a small crop system where you're producing you know, high, high value horticultural goods, but it's never gonna work in a broad acre or a grazing uh, context where you need to, you'll need to be applying 10 tons of, uh, of biochar hectare across hundreds of thousands of hectares. So that's not regenerative and to think about all the trees you've got to cut down. That's not regenerative in that context, but it might be regenerative in a small crop context. So this, the whole thing is very much context dependent um, in terms of the tools you're going to use or the practices you're going to use. Now, if you are new to regenerative agriculture and you clicked on this video simply to learn about some of the practices you could look into, things could be no-till, so going uh, to no tillage or reduce tillage. Even with that, there's caveats and it depends on your context and you know if you'd rather terminate a cover crop with tillage versus spraying it out and the trade-offs between it, like it's very complex, um, which is why it's so hard to define. But in a general sense, going no-till uh, is, is very beneficial for soil health. Um, you want to use cover crops, you want to have good crop rotation. It's not for the American farmers out there, not just going corn, 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 or corn, soy, corn, soy. Um, throwing some wheat in there, maybe a, a pasture phase, uh, some canola. Yeah, it, really getting a diversity in your rotations. That's beneficial for, for every aspect. Other things like using uh, carbon-based fertilizers, um, using inoculants, trying to support microbes for our uh, grazers out there, trying to uh, holistically graze or use rotational grazing and giving our plants enough rest. And then also really focusing on the form of uh, fertilizer we're supplying our plants and really targeting our trace minerals to improve plant health to such a point where they can fight against pest and disease without using pesticides and fungicides and, and all the other sides. Now that's a really good segue to can regenerative farmers use herbicides and pesticides and, uh, and, and tillage or whatnot? And I think according to this, it, like it depends. If we are improving our system, then it's fine to be using herbicides and pesticides. Where it becomes problematic is if we're apply, applying so much that's going to our waterways and um, it's killing all the insect and microbial activity or um, populations in our soil, and that's degeneration. So you have a cover crop in, or you go from a typical wheat farmer, you have a fallow over summer, uh, to, so with that you'll be spraying three times during your fallow. Um, take that system and compare it to, you put a cover crop in um, at the start of summer, you spray it out once, and then the, that cover crop forms a mat to then suppress weeds. So you've gone from three sprays to one spray and a cover crop. You're still using a spray, still trying to terminate that cover crop and you're applying Roundup, but it's a lot better from where you are. So I would class that as regenerative. Ultimately, this is a big uh, topic and it's very complicated. Um, and it's almost a good thing that you can't quite define it because it's, uh, it's one of those things where maybe it shouldn't be quite defined. But whenever you hear someone say, yep, I'm regenerative, always ask, you know, what does that mean? How are you regenerative? rather than taking it at the surface level of, oh cool, they're, they're regenerative. Very good, well that's a bit of a rant from me. Again, if you're a farmer in Australia wanting to achieve these three things, I'm very much focused on increasing the profitability of farming with regenerative practices. So if you're interested to see how that could work for your situation, um, get in contact with me for a free 30 minute consultation. Um, otherwise, for everyone else, make sure to subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, cheers.